everyone. Thank you for watching another Plática on the series to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. My name is Jorge Hernandez. I'm a park ranger at Lincoln Home National Historic Site in Springfield, Illinois. My guest today is uh, Dr. Michael Hogan. He is a historian, emeritus humanities chair at the American School Foundation of Guadalajara and former professor of the international relations at the Autonomous University of Guadalajara. He's also the author of multiple books, uh, including the book that will guide our conversation today, and that's Abraham Lincoln and Mexico, A History of Courage, Intrigue, and Unlikely Friendships. Uh, Dr. Hogan, welcome. Thank you very much, Jorge. Good to be here. All right, well, let's jump right in uh, because um, let's talk about your book, Abraham Lincoln and Mexico, which I have a copy right here. I really enjoy reading this book because it gives us a new perspective on Abraham Lincoln and sometimes a story that not a lot of people know about, you know. But before we go into the details of this book, I want to ask you, what inspired you to write about Abraham Lincoln, but more specifically, write about his connection with Mexico? Thank you, Harry. That's a good question. Um, you, you know, when I when I finally got this manuscript together, <clears throat> I sent it to a publisher and he said, well, there's probably 10,000 books on Lincoln. What makes this one so special? And I said, no, no, there's actually 30,000 books on Lincoln, but there's <laughs> none about Lincoln and Mexico. Mm -hmm. and, and the genesis of the book was, uh, Back in 2012, I was uh, teaching both international relations at the university and advanced placement U.S. history at the American School Foundation. And always I had drawn attention to, you know, the Mexican War as part of our curriculum, even though it's barely mentioned, you know, in most U.S. Uh, uh, textbooks. And I also mentioned, you know, Lincoln's role in, um, in, in objecting to that war. Uh, with his with his uh, step uh, with his uh, spot resolutions. At any rate, um, in 2012, the Spielberg movie Lincoln came out, and I mm -hmm. told my students, "Oh, you, you've got to see this movie because all the early uh, early commentary on it was how courageous Lincoln was in in uh, setting forth uh, uh, certain ideas and and." Uh, and how, how it, you know, we saw great examples of his courage that had never been seen before. And I went, oh, never seen before? Well, that must be, he's going to talk about when he stood up in Congress and objected to the Mexican War. So I told uh -huh. him, you, you have to see this movie. Mm -hmm. So they all went, <clears throat> and they came back, and they said, no, Doc, nothing at all about Mexico. Mm -hmm. And my student said, well, if, if there's going to be something about Lincoln and Mexico, you're going to have to write the book. And here we have it, right? Here we have it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and now going straight to uh, the book, uh, there's a uh, passage that I really like, and I like it because I think it sets the conversation uh, to here to Springfield, and uh, it gives a, a little bit of background of what we're going to talk about today. And in your book, and I'm going to quote you, you mentioned that ordinary men and women are sometimes called to greatness. If they are blessed by fate and a few good friends, the alliances they make can help modify the errors of the past and forge a new future. Now, the reason why I bring that up right away is because uh, that passage can take us to the moment here in Springfield, 1861, when Lincoln began a long-lasting friendship with Matias Romero. And I'll let you uh, talk about Matias Romero. Uh, so who was Matias Romero and what was he doing here in Springfield in 1861? Okay, good question again, <clears throat> but let me give a little background here. Sure. So, so I began writing the book, and originally it was Abraham Lincoln and the Mexican War, because of course, as you know from previous uh, uh, episodes here, uh, he objected to the... Uh, you know, to the constitutionality of the war itself back in, back in uh, 18, 1847. However, when I, when I had, had written all that, all I had was 80 pages. And, yeah. and my students said, well, that's not a book. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, you've got to find more, do more research. That's what you tell us all the time. So my next step was to actually, you know, engage in research during the period 1861 on when Benito Juarez was president of Mexico and Abraham Lincoln was president of the United States. And I thought, well, surely they must have known each other or exchanged correspondence. 
Well, no, they they didn't exchange any any direct correspondence. However, I did find a letter at Brown University in the John Hay Library, which Lincoln had written to Matias Romero, who was the ambassador of Mexico to the United States and the first foreign ambassador to visit uh, Lincoln after he became president of the United States. This was actually before his inauguration. He had mm -hmm. just been elected in Springfield, Illinois. They were celebrating fireworks that night and Romero came into town, introduced himself and had dinner with the Lincoln family, played with the Lincoln dog, Fido. Yes, <laughs> you yes. Know, in the exact house where you are now. So, uh -huh. you know, and they became they became friends. Yeah, what what I think about uh, uh, find it really fascinating that what is it like ten years uh, or after the U.S. Mexico War, uh, Benito Juarez uh, in a way takes this kind of like leap of faith, you know, like sending uh, Matias Romero to begin a friendship that probably people at that time never thought that could happen, you know, after the U.S. Mexico War. But here you have you know Matias Romero beginning that friendship, and it would continue on. Uh, throughout uh, Lincoln's uh, presidential career up to his assassination. Uh, but also in your book, I mean, the reason why uh, Matias Romero is signed is because they want to begin this friendship because Mexico is pretty much fighting its own war across, uh, uh, across the Rio Grande, pretty much. Well, by 1861, no. But by 1863, of course, the mm -hmm. French taking advantage, Napoleon III taking advantage of the fact that the U.S. is in a civil war, actually invades Mexico. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, they impose uh, Maximilian as, as, uh, as emperor in, in, in the Chapultepec Castle in Mexico City, forcing, mm -hmm. forcing um, uh, President Juarez into, into exile, essentially. Mm -hmm. So now Matias Romero goes back in 1863 but of course, Lincoln is too busy with the war to really do much in terms of help. But well, one of the things he, he, Romero does, and he's very, he's very clever, very witty. Uh, he speaks French, he speaks English, he speaks Spanish. He, he finds that Mrs. Lincoln loves to go shopping. Ah. <laughs> and she can't get a carriage to go shopping, but he has a rented carriage. So he mm -hmm. takes her shopping for three hours. And when she returns to the White House, she tells Abe, Abe, you've got to help this young man. You know, you're indebted to him. And Lincoln, of course, <laughs> he totally agreed he was indebted because he just didn't have the time to pay attention to, 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 uh, to Mary Todd Lincoln at the time. <clears throat> well, Mary Todd introduced this young man at dinners and luncheons to major bankers and investors. Uh, Romero was able to sell Mexican bonds uh, over $24 million worth at discounted prices to and got, garner $18 million, which he used to buy supplies, buy medical supplies, buy uniforms, boots, and of course, uh, advanced weaponry for the uh, resistance forces, the Republican forces fighting against the French. Yeah, so that, that brings me to the other um, question and comment I have about your book, which I think is also really fascinating, is that uh, when we, uh, in American history, when we think about the 1860s, you know, we might think immediately about Abraham Lincoln and the, and the Civil War. Uh, but in your book, you tied, you know, uh, the French intervention uh, in Mexico with the Civil War. And I think the link here, as you mentioned, is Matias Romero. But, uh, but in the story, uh, if I'm, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Matias Romero tries to kind of like convince Lincoln to help Mexico in some sort of way. But like you said, Lincoln is really tied with the Civil War. Uh, but then after uh, the Civil War is over or after Lincoln's assassination, and then the Civil War is over. Matias Romero finds this help from the general that he met probably through Mary Todd Lincoln's uh, dinner party. Right. Exactly. And of course, you know, the most famous general and a very, very close friend of, of uh of Romero's was, was Ulysses S. Grant. And one of the things Ulysses S. Grant did, pretty much on his own, uh, because the Secretary of State Seward was totally against it, pretty much on his own, he sent, <clears throat> um, after the Appomattox Courthouse surrender, he sent 50,000 US troops to Texas, to the border, mm -hmm. including 10,000 uh, black uh, you know, troops. And uh, on the way, he ordered uh, uh, 
uh, General Sheridan to lose 30,000 rifles on the border so that the mm -hmm. uh, Mexicans could, could uh, pick them up. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, this, this movement, this troop movement, really impeded the, the outflow of cotton and, and other supplies going, going, going abroad, which, which, of course, cut the income to the Confederacy in half. It also prevented the influx of weapons coming into the area, and ultimately, you know, changed the course of the, you know, of, of the war between the French and the Mexicans. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's uh, it that that that's the the key of the book, you know, uh, from your book, I believe, you know, how uh, as your title suggests, you know, unlikely friendships, you know, and it all begins, you know, with uh, Matias Romero, you know, showing up here in Springfield in 1861 to congratulate uh, Lincoln and Benito Juarez, you know, Benito Juarez sent Matias Romero over here. And it's uh, in, in your book, you mentioned that, I mean, uh, Benito Juarez is considered the, the, the Mexican Lincoln mm -hmm. uh, in some sort of, or the Lincoln of Mexico. <laughs> uh, but I mean, you know, you know, and but they never met, uh, you know. But they have a lot of commonalities, right? A, a lot of commonalities. Even though Lincoln was six foot four, and ironically, Waters was four foot six, <laughs> uh, <laughs> they were both liberals. They, they were both, uh, you know, Republicans. In other words, they believed in a Republican form of government. Mm -hmm. um, they were both lawyers, and, and you know that was significant because when they exchanged uh, comments, they they had ordered their thoughts in such a way that they could communicate very clearly with each other. Mm -hmm. um, they were also very passionate about helping the poor and they both came from, from, from uh, poor backgrounds. Uh, mm -hmm. What is his uh, sister was a maid in a, in a wealthy family, which is how he got access to, you know, to the law school. Mm -hmm. um, Lincoln, of course, uh, you know, worked as a law clerk in, in you know, red law. Uh, but both of them were born were born poor and worked themselves up to uh, positions of of uh, great esteem in their countries in their country's eyes. Yeah, and Matias Romero, I believe that was also one of his connections or immediate connections with Lincoln, right? Because Matias Romero was also a, a lawyer. So I imagine when they first met here in Springfield, you know, they click right away. You know. Yeah, yeah, and and they were both very forthcoming. They're both very honest. And open, open people, mm -hmm. and and obviously they both had had had, had good senses of humor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can just imagine the kind of conversation that happened here at the Lincoln home, you know, in the parlor or in the sitting room, you know, where the when the Lincolns uh, had uh, Matias Romero. Overall, I mean, we've been talking about this uh, uh, friendship, you know, and, and and Lincoln and Mexico and how both histories connect you know, in some sort of way here in Springfield. That's where that relationship began. Exactly. Uh, so uh, what do you think that, that what, what do you think is the message, you know, from, from that uh, initial conversation in 1861 at the home that we uh, have here in Springfield? Well, I think, as you said earlier, Jorge, this was a time, 1861, when the memories of the invasion of Mexico by a U.S. Army were still very fresh in people's minds. The resentment, the anger, the frustration that was felt by the Mexican people, the superior Anglo-Saxon attitude that was felt by many, many Americans, these conflictive, uh, you know, uh, these conflictive attitudes. In spite of that, these two men got together in Springfield as human beings mm -hmm. and sat down and exchanged their views and came to a peaceful and profitable understanding that served both countries. And I think that's what we can learn from that. This is also a time of very conflictive behavior on both sides and the politics of both sides. And many, many people in, in Mexico feel some antipathy towards the, the American government. And many people in, in, in the US feel this anger towards immigrants and so on and so forth. But it's also a time when we can remember, not only did Matias Romero sit down with Lincoln, but he sat down with Mary Todd. He sat right. down with, with uh, the common people as well. And it was these connections that enabled Mexico to overcome uh, the French and of course, the US to overcome uh, the Confederacy. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good point. Uh, but uh, Dr. Uh, Michael Hogan, thank you so much for your time and for joining us uh, for, uh, 
as we celebrate here at Lincoln Home, the Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, so we'll continue to read your book because it has really good information. Uh, but once again, thank you so much for joining in. Thank you, Jorge. Viva Mexico, viva Estados Unidos. And for everyone, uh, stay tuned for uh, more videos as we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month at Lincoln Home. Thank you.